Look, honestly, if you are against AI, please don't watch this video because you might be annoyed. And if you are still here, it's good news. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you the behind the scenes of this image and this one as well. It is my design for Polestar Hot Wheels design challenge. And basically, I use Blender 3D and Mid Journey for the background and combine these two. I like the idea of playing around AI and 3D. And actually, this reminds me today's sponsor, Viscom. If you are familiar with the channel, you know that I'm a fan of Viscom. But if you are new, somehow, for some reason, if you didn't hear about Viscom, it is an AI tool specifically developed for designers. And recently, they got some updates. The user interface, user experience changed a lot. And now the workflow is even smoother. You can upload a sketch or you can directly sketch into it. And then you can write your prompt and render it with multiple options. And it's not only about from sketch to render it's the whole design process it's a great support for your creativity and the overall design development you can try it yourself for free at viscom.ai thanks for sponsoring the video all right now we can talk about how i made these renders and at the end of the video i'm gonna show you my final posters that i submitted for this challenge so the concept of this car is the body itself is like a polestar design language minimal scandinavian feeling and a confident design however the wheels are exaggerated wheels like hot wheels toys Basically, the challenge is about combining this two and go back to your childhood and open your mind and go crazy. So I thought with huge wheels, like a monster truck off-road mixed wheels with an orange greenhouse. I mean, orange greenhouse sounds kind of funny, but anyway, orange wheels on the back, white wheels on the front, some toy-like elements, toy-like details. And that was the concept of the car. So I wanted to put it in an environment not like a typical race car type of this orange rail of the Hot Wheels jumping around. I mean, it's like this, but I wanted to show like a mountains or like some natural environment. And on this render, my idea was like the car is running away from this orange typical Hot Wheels rail because Paul Star has this like breaking the rules type of approach. So, so it is jumping off from the typical rail to the wild environment let's say but my starting point was not the composition or anything i went to mid journey and i wanted to generate different type of scenarios for hot wheels cars then i picked this one on the bottom right and i created some variations of it this was one of the variations this is another one and by the way if you don't know how to use mid journey it's not like just writing the prompt and getting the results i mean basically it is but you can take these results and evolve them further and if you want to see in a detailed way how i use mid journey and viscom basically ai for car design i'm putting a course together soon it will be released at the moment it is on pre-order stage so you can go to my website barkapla.com to pre-order get a 30 dollars discount and get confident with ai for car design mid journey and viscom so I generated a couple images like that and when I reached to this one I got quite happy because I thought I can place my car here and uh, I like the background and I thought like the car is going upwards uphill and it can just jump from the rail so I like this one and it was already enough for me to jump into Blender place it as background of my camera let me show you how to do that let's say we have a camera here a new one from the camera view I see nothing right now let's go to material preview for example I see nothing and under the camera options, you can basically check the box background images and add an image here. So now from the camera view, I can see this image as a reference to me. If I get out of camera view, the image doesn't exist anywhere. But if I get into camera view, I can see there. And when I'm in the camera view, if I just check this box, camera to view, even if I'm rotating now, as you see on the background, the scene is moving, but I always see this as a reference image. That's basically what I did. Here was my original camera. So we can see the background on my original camera. And I just placed the car somewhere like this. So it feels like the car is jumping from the orange rail, as I mentioned before. But the problem here is, first of all, I can see the car on the behind, which I will not even need to fix in this render. But for the next render, I will show you how I fixed it. But the car is not on the rail exactly. Like it doesn't give me this effect of jumping from the rail. And I have the reflection of the other car and so on. So... What I did was basically creating a very simple object, which is this one. As you see, it's like a very simple mesh, which is not even regular from any point. But when I look from the camera view, that's how I modeled it, by the way. Like I put it on the camera view and I was dragging this vertices to kind of match with the background rail. Especially this beginning, it more or less matches. And then for the rest, I have the possibility to be flexible. So basically, after I put this, I didn't even need to fix the car on the background because we covered it with the 3D object already. 
So if I go to rendered view, very important thing to have kind of like a matching background, matching HDRI, which kind of fits with this environment. I quite like it, but it was not enough. I wanted to add some extra lights to the scene. For example, the sun here, you see we catch some sunlight here and we have an area light from the bottom from here and it's an orange area light. So it kind of mimics the reflections of the orange rail on the car. That was my goal on this one. And then I just rendered this image. So this is the render from Blender. And then I jumped into Photoshop. I put the background image and then on top of it, I put my render and I changed the color balance a little bit to get a better match. The original render was a little bit bluish compared to the background. So on Photoshop, I just made it a little bit more warmer version of my render. So it matched better with the background right now. And then I started to add the motion blur on the edge of this render. For example, here, the first one, the second one is on this right rear wheel. The next one is the whole wheel on the right left. I mean the rear left and the front wheels as well. So now the car is in a more dynamic scene, in a more dynamic state. Then the next thing was exaggerating this shiny plastic feeling on the greenhouse. So I added a layer with the color dodge basically, and I just painted it to orange. So it gave me this nice effect on the plastic. Then I was not so happy with this orange reflections which I put myself on the blender. So I wanted to add some bright strokes here to show it as a shadow. And here also I added a little bit more darkness to give a little bit of feeling of the car is kind of hovering. These wheels are hovering from the ground. And then the fun part was breaking this rail actually. So the first thing was drawing what I want to break here. And then I used the generative fill in Photoshop to remove this area. So basically I used the background or actually I didn't use generative fill. I just painted it with the brush and then I added Gaussian blur. So it looked like part of the background. And then I also added some highlights to this surfaces. Then I just painted manually quickly by picking the color from here and adding some particles and of course giving it a motion blur. The next thing was adding the highlights like um, glow effect on the headlights and then some bright strokes here because I wanted to emphasize this highlights with like a bright stroke and I like it because it's not like a final 3D model or anything it's kind of a combination of AI blender a little bit of sketching here and there and the final touch was adding some camera raw filter so basically like playing with contrast highlights shadows and the colors of the image and if you don't know what I mean you can learn it on my photoshop for car design course on my website backupland.com I was not so happy with here because this area is blurred. Everything is motion blurred a little bit. So I felt like this is too crispy. So I also added a little bit of Gaussian blur there. And this is the final image. On this render, we have a couple more different tricks. Let's jump into it. The beginning of it was the same. I went to mid journey. I created some of the different images and I quite like this one. Of course, I needed to change the car, but I like the feeling of now the car is not on this orange typical Hot Wheels rail. The rail is actually on the background. So the car ran away from the Hot Wheels world a little bit, like breaking the borders of the world, Hot Wheels world, because it's a collaboration between Polestar and Hot Wheels. And now it's on top of the hill watching this Hot Wheels world, still part of it, but also kind of separated. So you got the point. I wanted to combine this too. And as a second render, it kind of completed the story for me. On the first render, the car was running out from the Hot Wheels rail, and now it's already out and watching from the top what's happening. So that's why I really like this image. But this time I wanted to start by removing the car because I thought it might be tricky to blend it everything in 3D. And I did this removing process on Photoshop. The first thing was generative fill. So I picked the car, I picked this area and I removed the car. But the new thing was also not super satisfying because it kind of created like a random flower here. So I did again the generative fill to clean a little bit. I was kind of happy with this already because I thought the car in 3D, like when I put the blender render, it will cover this background. But to be sure, I also cleaned it a little bit further, removed this area, and then I was able to manage removing the all flower thing. So I have kind of like a very nice base now. Then I cleaned also this right side of the image and that was my starting point. So the idea is the same. I put the mid journey on the background and I put the car here. I adjusted the camera and it kind of fits from this point of view to our image. So I like it. The problem was catching the shadows here and how to blend this 3D with the environment. So as I did on the first image, also here I just put a 3D plane. This time I needed to add a couple more details to the plane. So if we see it from the edit mode, you can see that it's subdivided a lot of times because I wanted to use the displace modifier. Let's go step by step. If I remove the base color on the edit mode, as you see, or also object mode, I can just make the modifier invisible. Let's change the base color to see it better. So as you see, it's a very smooth, very basic plane. 
with just proportional vertices movement around it. Nothing so complicated. But then when I add the displace modifier, we have this noisy texture on the ground. But it looks kind of like a waves rather than like a rocky feeling. So I also added a noise texture to the material itself with a displacement. So now we have a little bit more kind of rocky, more detailed feeling on this object. But we also need an image to make it more realistic and fitting better to background. So I went back to Mid Journey and I created this image for my as my texture for the ground material. And when I plug it to the base color, this was the result. It is not perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect because if we go to camera view and bring back our car, you can see that it gives me what I need. It looks a little bit dark on the material preview, but if you go to render view, I added some extra lights like area lights again to catch some interesting reflections on the floor as well. That's all I did on Blender and I just rendered this image and I placed it to the background. There's a slight difference if I zoom in here. Again, I did some color balance. As you see, it's less blue again to fit better to the background. And after that, it was like, it's nice, but I wanted to exaggerate more this orange rail going on here because it's not super satisfying yet. Maybe it doesn't give the story yet. That's why I made some more generative fill. As you can see now, we have some cars also going some like normal road here. And the generative fill gave me this kind of orange rail also here, orange road. And then I made a manual drawing. I basically picked the colors and drew around with a hard brush. And then I added Gaussian blur. And I did it a couple more times to give highlights. And the last one is like a kind of car silhouette also. So with a couple of bright strokes and a blur effect, I made this Hot Wheels idea stronger on this image. And then the final touches is I wanted to add a couple more lights here to give a stronger feeling and of course the glow effect. At the end, this is kind of basic model. It's not even finished everything because it's like the first stage of this design challenge. I didn't want to go into super details like making a production 3D model or anything. So design is still flexible as well. That's why I wanted to add this additional lights. I felt like it looks nice. As on the first image, it's like combination of Blender, AI, and some of the sketching. And by the way, if you are not confident with Blender skills, you can also learn Blender 3D from my online courses. The details are on my website, berkaplan.com. All right, the next thing is also some sketchy feelings here. If I zoom in, you can see the difference. I added a couple of highlights and a little bit of details to make the image stronger. Also, this layer is all about a couple of bright strokes. And as we did in the first image, I just played with the colors and that changes a lot. This was very pale feeling, very, a bit like boring. And then I just saturated the colors more. I added more contrast, shadows and highlights. So it looks more lively and I think it fits better to Hot Wheels idea in general. And the latest thing I did is again, adding some type of more color, a bit more emphasize on this plastic here, the orange plastic. And here it is. As I mentioned before, I want to show you the final posters that I submitted my design. And this was the template from a Polestar design contest itself. So basically we have this area to fill it up and then project name and the competitor's name. And here is my first poster. My idea was not filling up the poster with a lot of words and explaining the concept because I think this design talks to itself, like talk explains itself in a very good way because the body is Polestar, the wheels are Hot Wheels. The background, the environment puts the car in the right context. So I think it's very self-explainable. And on the top, I wanted to show the car from top, rear, side and the front views, orthographic views to show that it's also a 3D model. Because they mentioned that you can use AI. However, there was also a note that they will ask for a 3D model if you go on the next stages of the contest. So I wanted to show already that the design is possible to make in 3D. It's already done and it's a very good starting point to develop this design further. And also on this image, it's more like an emotional hero shot. And I wanted to show also the other angles. And as the name of the project, I also used AI chat GPT. And I asked a couple of questions and I, g I gave some input like it's a Polestar and Hot Wheels. I want like an exciting name and so on. And it gave me a lot of options, of course. And I decided to go with the Viking because it kind of fits to everything in this project. And on the poster too, I wanted to show that the car actually has six wheels on it, but one of them is hidden. Like we see two on the rear, two on the front, one on the top. But actually there's another one here behind the orange one. It's kind of hidden. It's not visible on any of the renders, but it's, I think, a nice little touch that if you look close enough to this image, it's kind of like, um, I don't know how to say, only for people who are interested in the details. Like here, you can see actually there's one more wheel because on this image, on top of the rear light, the fat rear tire starts already. So underneath, it seems like there's a platform. 
But on this image from a little bit top view, we see that actually there's a hole. So it's exactly for fitting these wheels. And on the 3D model, of course, it is like that. If I just move this up, you can see that we have a hidden wheel. On this file, it is still black because originally this was a black wheel, but I, of course, changed it to the white one. And also I wanted to show that it's like a one-seater and a quick interior modeling is done. So this is my submission for Polestar 2024 design contest with Hot Wheels. I hope you like it. I don't know if it will pass the first stage or not, because if it passes, I will have a chance to develop this design further, and it would be fun, honestly. I'm curious about what you think, so let me know in the comments, please, if this design will pass the first stage or not. And also, if you watched until here, please give me a like, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe for more car design content. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.